Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at updating some of our Wiz Smart Globes with Matter. We'll start by seeing if we can figure out which of our Smart Globes are compatible with Matter, and then we'll take a look at how to install the updates and see how they operate with Matter and Home Assistant after the update. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe and if you hit the bell icon, you'll get a notification when I release new videos each week. While you're at it, there's a bunch of ways that you can support the channel in the video description, including some affiliate links to purchase some smart devices that I've reviewed in past videos and ways to support the channel directly through things like my Buy Me A Coffee page. Both the Buy Me A Coffee link and all of the affiliate links you'll also find on my website, www.hivemindautomation.com.au. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So a little while ago, Wiz joined in on the Matter revolution by adding Matter support for some of the already existing Wiz smart globes. Now, the good news is that some existing smart globes already support the Matter update, but the obvious bad news is that that word some, which obviously makes it a little harder to identify which globes will be supported. Now, thankfully, there's a helpful article on the Wiz homepage that outlines how you can identify Matter compatible globes. And I will be putting a link to this particular page in the video description as well. The basic gist is that any Wiz smart globe manufactured after the second quarter of 2021 should be compatible with Matter and anything before then isn't. It's also worth noting that filament globes and possibly some others do need to have the Bluetooth logo on the box uh, to demonstrate support for Matter. Bluetooth in the Matter spec is only for the pairing process and isn't for control, so I'm not too worried about that Bluetooth requirement at all. So armed with the information from the website, I've done a couple of things. First, I popped down to Bunnings and I picked up a couple more Wiz Smart Globes and I made my purchasing decision based on the information on that webpage. I've also found that the previously reviewed Wiz Smart RGB Globe should also qualify. So we're going to test out the matter upgrade for a selection of whiz bulbs that I have here. Now for the purposes of this demo, I also have the Hive Apartments here. For viewers who came along to the train and hobby show and saw me there, you should recognize uh, these apartments. Uh, and I've got whiz smart bulbs installed in these four apartments here. This E14 candle globe here is uh, in a lamp fixture because it's the only uh, E14 uh, fixture that I actually have. Uh, and it's a little bit too tall to fit properly inside the apartment. So uh, you'll just need to excuse that. Uh, but we then have the originally uh, reviewed uh, E27 Wiz uh, RGB globe here. On uh, the bottom of this box here, you'll see that our model number is a 10 digit number with an A at the end. And that is uh, the requirement to qualify for the matter update. Up in uh, apartment five and six here, in apartment five, I have a new Wiz RGB globe. This is a B22 globe uh, and it's the 16 million color and warm to cool whites. And up in apartment six here, I have a new filament globe with the Bluetooth uh, logo there. Uh, and this one does a 2000 to 5000 K cool to warm white. Uh, and as you can see, it's a B22 fixture there. Now I'm fairly confident that not all of these lights will support matter. 
In fact, according to the model number on the side of this E14 globe, it shouldn't work at all, but let's give it a try anyway. Now, the good news is that if you've got Matter compatible Wiz devices, the Wiz V2 app should tell you that they are compatible when we get to the point of updating them with the Matter firmware. Now, obviously, because these are 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi only connected bulbs, we need all the bulbs to be on the same 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network, and our phone should also be connected to the same 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Being that these are Wi-Fi only bulbs, we'll be controlling them using Matter over Wi-Fi rather than Matter over Thread. Okay, so provided everything is on the same 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, including our Matter Hub, which is in this case is going to be my uh, HomePod Mini behind me here, we should be able to go into our Wiz V2 app here. It's also worth noting that our network does need to support IPv6 for Matter to work. So when we go into our Wiz V2 app and tap on settings in the bottom right hand corner, we should uh, be able to tap on integrations here. And we've got a list of integrations and please use the dedicated app of each integration to adjust its settings. Now, uh, when I searched this before, I had some trouble, but I think I might've been on the wrong Wi-Fi. Um, but let's tap on Matter and it's going to start searching our network to see which devices are compatible with the Matter integration. So hopefully we should get more than just one. Oh, okay, at the moment we're only seeing the one, which is apartment three. Um, not sure why that is, uh, but let's tap on apartment three and it's got the device status is up to date and the onboarding code. Uh, and it says, make sure your Matter Hub and your Wiz devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi network and keep your Wiz devices powered on. And now you see we've got this QR code and the 11 digit code there. Um, so I can uh, copy that code to my clipboard and it says start setup here. Now, if I tap start setup, I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but let's see. So uh, it now has that, that uh, setup token is gonna expire in 15 minutes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pop over to my Home Assistant app. Now it is important to understand that with Home Assistant and Matter, you do need to make use of the Home Assistant companion app. You can't do this through the web interface. In fact, if I pop over to my laptop here and go to settings, devices and services and click on add integration, you'll see we've got add matter device here. And if I click add matter device, you need to use the Home Assistant companion app on your mobile phone to commission matter devices. So on my phone here, I'll go to settings, devices and services, and I'll tap add integration in the bottom right, and we'll tap add matter device. And I already copied the code to uh, my clipboard. So I'll go to more options here. Uh, and it's got nearby, we've got Wiz AE27, which is this one in the bottom right hand corner. So I'll tap on that and it's asked me for the setup code, which I will paste in here. And we'll tap continue. Home Assistant would like to add this accessory to Home Assistant. Uh, I'll tap add to Home Assistant. It may take a few minutes. So it's now adding that light to Home Assistant. Now, I wanna see if I can figure out why these other two have not picked up that they are matter compatible because they should be. Okay, this um, has not connected and I'm not sure why. I'm gonna tap cancel on that and pop back over to our Wiz app. Okay, so what I'm gonna try here is just opening my regular home app on uh, my iPad here and I'm gonna just tap on plus add accessory in the top right hand corner. I'm gonna scan this QR code uh, and it's asking me to add to home. So let's try that. Unable to add accessory, pairing with accessory failed. So let's back out here. I'll restart the Wiz app here. Go to settings, integrations and matter. 
and we'll tap on apartment three, get our onboarding code and tap start setup. We'll tap the plus button, add accessory again and scan the QR code from our phone into our iPad and see if this works this time. It might be that when we closed the local app that caused the problem. So, cause it's saying now it's adding to home. Yeah, okay, so it's added that to the home. I'm just gonna create a new room. I'll call it apartments uh, and we'll tap continue and we should then get uh, that in uh, this apartment three here in our home kit without having to first push it through home assistant and then uh, expose that back into HomeKit. It's actually pretty exciting to have it available just straight in HomeKit without us even uh, needing to uh, use the Wiz app, for example, on my iPad here. We do need to use the Wiz app to create the onboarding code, which that is an important distinction here because none of these lamps have the onboarding code uh, available on the outside of the device, much like the um, HomeKit compatible devices would. Uh, we do need to generate that inside the app. So we've got some automations. We'll tap continue, added light to the hive. Uh, so now if I scroll down the left, we'll go to apartments and we should, uh, we've got it updating here, but I should be able to, so it's hundred percent. I can turn it off and it's taking a moment to update. Not sure why that's so slow, uh, but we can uh, go into accessory settings, group with other accessories, all the normal stuff that we can do uh, with home kit. Uh, so uh, we can turn it off and on. Uh, we'll go into the thing there and we can grab colors. Uh, and we can grab a color temperature here. Uh, and we've got color swatches there as well. Uh, it's worth mentioning that this is uh, iPad OS 17. So the home app does look a little bit different from what you might expect. So with HomeKit working, uh, we've still got about 11 and a half minutes before this token expires. Let's try Home Assistant from our iPad this time uh, and see whether we can get this up and running in Home Assistant. Okay, so in my demo Home Assistant app on my iPad here, I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna go to devices and services, add integration in the bottom right tap add matter device and scan the QR code on my phone and tap add to home assistant. And it may take a few minutes. It's connecting. It says unable to pair pairing failed. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restart the Wiz V2 app again, go to settings, integrations, matter, let that scan, go to apartment three, get the onboarding code up, add integration, I'll tap start setup, add matter device over here and scan the QR code. We'll tap add to home assistant and unable to pair HF error domain error 33. So it kind of looks a little bit like uh, we may have a little bit of trouble pairing. I will continue to experiment with this. I find it a little bit odd that um, we're not getting uh, the two brand new devices up and running uh, for whatever reason. They're not even showing up in the Wiz app as being compatible, even though they should meet the criteria uh, for the compatibility. So it's very, very strange that they're not showing up at all. Um, and uh, it is also very frustrating um, that um, this apartment three one is just not coming up at all inside anything other than uh, home kit. Um, so what I was actually hoping to be able to demonstrate here was the concept of multi-fabric or multi-admin, having multiple matter networks available to us uh, through uh, the matter spec and then being able to um, make use of the same accessory from multiple locations. And that's actually fairly important. Let, let's imagine for a moment a hypothetical situation, a, a shared living 
situation with three housemates, each with a their own separate private room, and each housemate then has their own self-contained smart home in their private spaces. Housemate one uses only Apple devices, an iPhone, a HomePod, etc. in their room. Housemate two only uses Google devices, a Pixel phone, Google Nest, smart speaker, etc. And housemate three uses an Amazon Echo and a Samsung phone. But then they want to add some smarts in the common areas like the lounge room, the kitchen and the bathroom, for example. Now, previously, this would have proven a little bit difficult to manage without a fourth platform like Home Assistant to then unify everything together. And that then also creates a secondary potential problem of any of the three housemates being able to then interact with one another's personal devices within their personal spaces. Now, theoretically, Matter with multi-admin allows each of those housemates to add devices into the common area into their own ecosystem, meaning their personal area devices don't get exposed to their housemates, but those smart devices that are then installed into the common areas could still be controlled by each of them individually without needing to have special apps for each different accessory. At least I believe that's the way that it could work. And I'll definitely be looking into testing this at some point, but I am going to need a little bit of time to plan some of those tests. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out when I do manage to get that done. So that was my first attempt at uh, upgrading compatible with smart bulbs to use Matter. Now the process is relatively simple, but your mileage definitely will vary based on the fact that I have three allegedly compatible bulbs here and I was only able to get one of them paired with Matter and it only worked with Apple Home, I'm a little bit concerned that this is not quite fully baked yet. It was pretty easy to set this up um, and it was very easy to get the devices integrated into Apple HomeKit and the process looks pretty easy for Home Assistant as well, provided nothing goes wrong. So what I suspect may be happening here with these failures is something to do with my matter fabric. I'm going to need to do a fair bit more research to figure out what's going on and a lot more tinkering around. I am still frustrated that I only got um, one of the three potentially compatible devices in there, uh, but we will uh, hopefully get around that soon. I'm pretty excited for the future of the smart home with matter at its core because it's going to make purchasing decisions far simpler without needing to spend several days beforehand researching whether or not the device that you're looking at is going to work with your existing ecosystem. Now, so far, there's only a handful of manufacturers that have Matter devices available. There's the Eve Home devices that we'll be looking at in a future video, uh, and those uh, should hopefully be updatable to Matter, and we'll find out uh, in the next episode. Uh, and obviously some of these whiz bulbs and a couple of others like Govi, Nanoleaf and Yeelight have accessories on the market. That said, not all of them are available in Australia just yet, which is a little frustrating. Let me know what you think of Matter in the comments section down below. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your smart home journey. Be sure to drop a comment down below with home automation ideas you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like and help the YouTube algorithm recommend it to more viewers. If you're not already subscribed, take a moment to subscribe now. And while you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll get a notification when I release a new video and that's normally every week. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there's some affiliate links in the video description and a buy me a coffee link also in the video description. Any contribution you make through buy me a coffee gets put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.